Hey guys, Logan here from Popular Woodworking Magazine. In this video, I wanna to talk to you about different types of saws. I think most of us are familiar with something like this guy. It's a handsaw, it's considered a Western style handsaw. What this is, is a saw that cuts on the push stroke. The teeth are angled forward, and as you push the saw, it cuts, and as you pull back, it's not cutting. But there's a different type of saw around that we get a lot of questions about, and I find extremely useful in the shop. I wanna to talk to you about those. And those are something like these guys. These are pole saws. Sometimes you'll hear these referred to as Japanese saws, uh, but really they're just considered pole saws. They cut on the pull stroke rather than the push stroke. And these come in a couple different styles. I wanna explain why I use each in my shop and why I think each one is useful for you to have. The first is gonna be something like this guy. This is called a Dizuki. This has a back on it that helps reinforce the blade, and the blades on these guys are extremely thin. This is my go-to saw for cutting joinery. I love to cut dovetails or tenons with this guy. It's really nice and narrow kerf, and it's extremely easy to line up. Going to the next style is gonna be this guy. This is considered a Ryoba. This has two different forms of teeth on it. There are some finer cross-cutting teeth on this side. They're slightly angled, so they cut across the grain really nicely. And then on this side, we have ripping teeth. These are for cutting down the grain or ripping a board to width. And these are a progressive tooth on this particular one. They're finer down here, and they get a little bit more aggressive as you get towards the end of the saw. Now, both of these are what I consider light duty saws. The plates are extremely thin, they're flexible. They're not something that I'm gonna really beat up. They generally stay on a shelf in my shop and I use them for very specific tasks like joinery. However, it is nice to have a pole saw like this guy that I'm not really worried about beating up. It's made a little bit more rugged and it's designed to take a little bit more abuse. Now, much like the other Ryoba, this one has teeth on two different sides has 17 teeth per inch on this side, so it's gonna be a nice fine cut. And then down here, again, there's a progressive tooth line. So it goes from seven teeth per inch up here to 10 teeth per inch down here. So it's a little bit finer as you start it, but as you're making your cut, it gets a little bit more aggressive. There's a couple of ways I use a saw like this in my shop. One is for kind of household tasks. If I need to trim a door jam down to some flooring, the blade's nice and flexible, it's going to uh, conform to the floor and I can use a piece of the flooring to flush trim whatever I'm cutting. This is also great for breaking down boards at the lumber yard. And something like this tough built one actually folds up just like that and I can throw it in the glove box of my truck uh, or if you have a car you can throw it in the trunk. That way when you get to the lumber yard you can buy longer boards, but then you can go ahead and cut them down. And by folding it up, the teeth are protected and you're not gonna dent or ding up the blade. And the other thing I find these useful for is cutting sheet stock. If I'm making a project that needs some notched corners, this guy is great to grab and quickly zip those out where something like a traditional panel saw might be a little bit harder when I'm on the bench like this. So if you're looking at adding a saw in your shop, take a look at a pole style saw. They're extremely ergonomic, they cut nice, and between the three different styles, I think you'll find a place for each in your shop.